think we are, we are good to go. OK, welcome, everyone. Thank you for showing up. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, so my name is Peter. Um, this is me. I'm a community advocate uh, for the, the OPA project, Open Policy Agent. I work for Styra. Uh, today, I'm not talking about those, though. I'm talking about telepresence uh, and kind of just from network engineer to K8's developer, right? My journey moving from uh, a network engineer into K8's developer and kind of the skills and knowledge that transfers uh, along with that, right? Because network engineering is a lot of troubleshooting, following uh, network path step by step, and kind of a lot of that transfers through into Kubernetes because you're always trying to go piece by piece to see where things have broken. So, and as I said, I'm Peter O'Neill. You can find me just about everywhere at Peter O'Neill Jr. Uh, tweet me, uh, connect, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Cool. So let's start off, right? Simple networking path here. Uh, once upon a time, websites, networking, very simple. You have your home network, right? Connected to your ISP, connected to some unknown number of middle hops, eventually to your, your website's ISP, right? Very simple networking path, and then you have a, a very simple uh, troubleshooting procedure, right? Like this is this is troubleshooting before cloud native, right? Like so, you have your your simple your simple website hosted on a public IP, probably served on port 80, unencrypted, right? Maybe just a simple HTML website, right? Troubleshooting consists of can I ping this host? Does Netcat say that the port is open and available to connect to? Does NS lookup Resolve to the right address, right? Like, is, is DNS working for the site, right? And then your typical, your typical fix for this is either you fix DNS or you trace route to the end, you figure out which hop uh, 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 the path stops at, and then you call your ISP and say, hey, fix this, it's broken. I'm a network engineer and I can see exactly where the, where the path broke, right? So very simple, right? And then we, then we move into the cloud native application, right? Now we have a lot more things, right? You're hosted in a, a big cloud provider. You might have hosted DNS. You might have some elastic IPs assigned to multiple high availability load balancers. You're serving on 443. You're doing TLS termination, right? You're passing this all through into Kubernetes, which then might hit API gateways and ingresses going through a service mesh. There's a lot going on now, right? So, so we, we, we've increased complexity quite a bit, right? And so now it's not as simple as just where does my networking path stop? Now all of a sudden it's where is my networking path getting all the way through and which services is it stopping at? Which uh, connections are breaking? Which things are not working as expected? So the, the troubleshooting steps here are not as simple as is the port open anymore? Now, now it's like which port on which service in which place, right? There is a very large complex uh, system now. And so, once again, kind of looking back at the network path, for the cloud native application, right, this is kind of the first, first half of the journey here, home network, ISP, and then we can even simplify this and say we, we're paying for a direct connect for our application, connected to a, the cloud network, to our load balancers, to our Kubernetes service, right? And then, but then that's just the first half of the, of the networking path, right? Or, sorry, <laughs> I jumped ahead of myself here. And so, so, uh, so, so this, this is first half of the, the networking path, right? But let's, let, let's cover this in a little more detail, right? And so this networking path to the cloud native application, right? And so, so as I said, right, home network, ISP, direct connect, but this is con connecting you to something called, right, your cloud provider's edge network, right? This edge network is, is where a lot goes on, right? Uh, and we'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a second. Uh, and then so from that edge network, you're going to be passed into a cloud region. You think of this as a cluster of, uh, of data centers, a single zone, which is a single, a cloud zone, which is a single data center, and then down into your Kubernetes cluster, right? So let's, let's cover this cloud edge thing a little bit in a little more detail, right? So with the introduction of, of, of this cloud edge, right, like you're able to bring your application closer to, to, to yourself or to your customers, to your end users, whatever, uh, wherever you're trying to access this thing, right? And so with this, what, what connecting to your cloud's edge gives you is, right, it gives you access to their robust cloud network, right? You're able to share the large backbone that, that your cloud provider has, right? You're able to skip the, the ASN merry-go-round being passed from ISP provider to provider, right? Like there, there's no miscellaneous uh, MTUs that were set bad, TTLs that were set bad, right? Like you're not, you're not constrained to uh, all, of the, all of the mishaps that happen on the, the wild frontier of the internet, right? Like you just need to get to this, this edge network and then you're, you're able to get <laughs> very reliably to your application, right? And so as a network engineer, this is what we're looking for, right? Like 
five nines of uptime, and like, oh, now we only have a couple minutes that it actually ever goes down, or a couple seconds, or whatever five nines actually equates to. But it's a lot of uptime, right? And so with that, right, like now that, now that, now that you're a network engineer and you've, you've engineered all this software-defined networking so that your network is very reliable just to get to your application, what does a network engineer do at a small startup? Right? Like, if you're not, if you're not consistently troubleshooting broken, broken hops and nodes, right? And so, this is when uh, I, I figured I would join over to the dark side and become the Kubernetes developer, right? And you might ask, why is it the dark side? Have you ever looked at the Sith logo and compared it to the Kubernetes logo? <laughs> I'm just saying, what a coincidence. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, 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 now, so now let's say that I, I'm working as a cloud native developer. Where are my networking problems, right? Like, wh where, where do I find uh, my networking problems? How do, I, how do I do all my tracing? How do I find where things are going on? So let's look at this, let's look at this networking path to the cloud application one more time, right? And so let's, let's, like I said, this is the first half of the equation, uh, right? Getting that direct connect right to your cloud uh, provider and getting into your, or getting to your, your Kubernetes cluster, right? But that's the first half. Then we have the second half, right? This is, this is where the networking path continues, but then it is still, it gets more complicated, right? So now it's just, it's not just this linear path, Right, but now you enter your Kubernetes cluster. You, you're at your Kubernetes uh, API. You get passed to maybe an API gateway, which is which is handing your user traffic to a set of ingresses. Those ingresses are pointed to any number of front-end services. Those services are intertwined into a mesh with back-end services, and then all of these services have n number of pods running n number of containers. And there's a lot of places that things can go wrong, right? And so. Now something goes wrong, right? Now all of a sudden, one of these pods or one of these containers, one of these things fails. So what do you do, right? Now all of a sudden, is it, is, you're looking at this from an end user perspective. You, you have no idea what's actually happening, right? Like you're, you're looking at a lot of this and you're saying like, oh, it's just not working. It's kind of like, ah, frustrating, right? And so, 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 so now, right, now we have to do some, network plumb uh, do some network plumbing, right? Like as any good network engineer does, you kind of just start at one end, fish to the pipe and see what's happening, right? And so traditional network plumbing, right? Like you, you kind of start at one end, go to the other, right? These are the tools of the trade. Traceroute, MTR, ping, NSLOOKUP, NETCAT, and SSH, right? Like these are, these are helping you identify where along the path things are not working. Uh, then you're seeing uh, how to connect to things, you're checking your DNS, and then at the very end here, you have that SSH command where you know, I want to get as close to the problem as possible. Once I'm there, right, SSH to that box, and I can probably fix it. I can fix, I can open up the ports, I can, right, like I can, I can uh, restart uh, some sort of uh, host level daemon, I, I can figure it all out once I can get to SSH, right? But all of this network plumbing doesn't work inside application routing, right? All this stuff works on the top half, but now that we've handed off to a Kubernetes cluster and we have all this application routing, how do we do this, right? So, ta-da, there's a whole bunch of Kubernetes networking plumbing tools, right? So kubectl is the base command here. I'm sure most of us have experience with this now, right? And so the three, three, very, basic, um, three very basic tools that, that, that we use pretty much every day when we're troubleshooting or working with Kubernetes are kubectl proxy uh, to connect your laptop to your cluster, right? If you want to access that API directly, kubectl port forward. If you want to do something a little more specific, connect to a pod, connect to a service or something. And then exec IT, uh, and then pipe that into like a bash shell command, right? And so that kind of gives you something similar to an SSH. Awkward. Uh, Cool. So let's uh, let, let, let's demo some of these commands. Okay. Cool. Let's pull up a terminal. Cool. That looks good. All right. So here I'm just setting my uh, my kube config file. This just lets me access my cluster. K, here I'm using shortcuts, so K stands for kubectl, uh, and I'll be using that for the rest of this demo. Uh, let's just do a get all, 
see it's running on this cluster. It should be empty. Cleared it right before this. So here we see we have just a, a empty cluster. I'm going to CD into my Git repository. Uh, then I'm going to be looking at, uh, ooh, what is it, CD? Uh, there we go. Okay, it's examples. So these examples are the examples that are actually on the Kubernetes website. These are just free to use. I was just looking for something simple so uh, to work with here. So you can find these uh, on the Kubernetes in the Kubernetes repositories under examples. And so let's CD into this guestbook Go. And with this, right, so I'm just going to cat out all the config files and shove them right into my cluster. Right, this is going to give me a sample application to work with. Uh, and here we see that the sample application uh, has, has three services. Uh, and so we just do a kubectl, get all. Right now we can see that this, ooh, that's not very formatted very well. Right, so now we can see that this application is up and running. I see that the, the guestbook has, has, the front end service has three pods running, and, and then it has a database with uh, masters and slaves, or mains and, and, and follow. Followers? I don't know. But anyway, so this application is running. Now let's actually, uh, let's, let's start working with some of these, these networking tools, right? So let's, let's do a kubectl uh, proxy on port 8080, right? And so this is up and running. And so remember, as actually, so yeah, so as I mentioned before, the proxy here is going to connect us, uh, connect our cluster to our our, our local laptop, right? Like, so this is going to give us uh, access to the Kubernetes API on this port 8080. So we can do things like curl on localhost on 8080 with API, right? And so the Kubernetes API now is uh, returning things on localhost. We can see that uh, it's, showing me, it's showing me some information about the API. Maybe I want something a little bit more specific. Maybe I want, right? Maybe I want to see the pods, right? So namespaces, default, pods, right? Like, so you kind of have to kind of have to know where things are, though, on this API, right? Like, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do, uh, but you can, you can pipe through things. And then, right, what this gives you, right? Like, kubectl does a lot of this for you, right? It masks a lot of working with the API. And, and when you want to do a get pods, right, like, you can, you can see things. So let me actually show that. Um, so let's see. Set my kube config, get pods, right? Like this kubectl command is also working with the same API, and it's returning uh, it's returning data about uh, uh, returning the same data. It's just presented in a way that's supposed to be very easy to use. But sometimes easy to use isn't going to give you all of the information that you need, right? So if we connect directly to the API with the proxy, maybe we can do something like pipe it through to a JQ uh, and get some more information, right? Maybe I want all the pods dot metadata dot name uh, yeah but I think that's right nope say again ah thank you thank you appreciate that and so right here we can see like this is going to pull up uh, right that same list of pods right we're, we're accessing the same information but Maybe we want to write, see more information about this, right? Like, so this is going to give us uh, a, a ton more, right? And so, right, this is just another way to look at this information. It's another way to to access specific information uh, uh, that kubectl might might be changing for us, right? So, so with that, right? Like, maybe like let's look at let's look at one pod in particular, right? Like, let's describe this first pod up here. Right, and so this gives us some information. It's kind of like very basic, uh, very basic stuff of what's going on. Like maybe, maybe we even do instead of a describe, we do a get pod, and then we do uh, output JSON to kind of really, really see more information about this. Right, like, and so this is going to look pretty, pretty similar to, right, if we were to pass this in and say we want the first object in this pod list, right, because we grabbed the first one off the list over there. So if we scroll up to the top here. Actually, I think I passed it. But that's the thing. We're working with the API. You get, you get a lot of data piped into your terminal. Um, anyway, so here we see top here. 
scroll up to the top here. Right, and so it gives us, it gives us like this is just another way to look at this information uh, and kind of get, kind of dig into a pod in just a different way to get more specific information. Right, and so with that, I'm gonna move into the next tool here, which is uh, port forwarding. So uh, I'm gonna stop my proxy here. And, right, and so, uh, so port forwarding, we talked about the proxy being a full connection between the cluster and your laptop, right? Connecting, click, connecting the whole API to, to, to your laptop. Uh, and now with port forward, this is a little bit more specific. Right, this is, this is I want to forward one, one specific pod or one specific deployment or one specific service to my computer so that I can interact with, interact with it in some way, right? Like I want to troubleshoot that thing. So let's do a kubectl port uh, forward. Actually, wait. Let's do a kubectl get services first, right? Let's like, let's see what's what's working on here. What what exists on here, right? So I see the uh, I see here. There's a guestbook service type load balancer, which means it's probably our front end, right? And it's running on port three thousand, right? So kubectl uh, port forward service guestbook three thousand, right? So now this now this now this forward uh, now this port forward is running. I'm forwarding that service. Uh, for 3,000 down to my local machine, also on port 3,000, right? It's a, it's a shorthand 3,000. If you don't list a, a local port, it just mirrors the same port. So with that, let's go back over to other terminal here. I'm gonna clear this, uh, clear this as well, right? And so now this is running. Uh, I can look at what this looks like on port 3,000, right? HTTP is just a a way to do curl with pretty colors. Uh, you can do brew install HTTP pi if you ever, if you want to try it out. Um, so yeah, so I see this is working. Okay, cool, right? Uh, but maybe maybe I actually just want to like see the servers. So I, I can pop over to here and kind of just pull it up. Like oh okay cool. This looks like look like looks like this service is working, right? So whatever problem was being reported is is not here, right? So okay, so that seems fine. Right, maybe maybe I need to dive in uh, a little bit deeper. Let's uh, so let's go, let's go back to our port forward here and say, okay, the service the service wasn't wasn't where my problem was. Like let's let's take a look at at one of these pods or, or let's look a little bit closer closer into the application. So we'll do a k get all see see what's running see what see what exists. Uh, so then I see I see more uh, I see I see that the the guestbook service is associated to three pods. Right, so. So there's three pods running, right? It could be, the problem could be anywhere on any of these pods. So let's actually just, so let's check out uh, another one. Right, so here we go. Uh, let's take a look at this. So if we wanna do that same port forward, right, but instead of a, the, ser the overall service, like let's look directly at one of these pods. Right, and so, this is actually going to look very similar because it is it is it is one of the pods in the service, so they, they should be very similar. You have this this nice changing color effect, but you see it's connected to the same thing. It's presenting the same data, uh, but we're just a little bit further into the application now. Uh, and so, right, um, uh, yeah. So here, let's actually. So last last. Last kind of uh, networking command here we're going to talk about uh, is the or the last kubectl command is kubectl exec, right? And so with kubectl exec, uh, what this is is kubectl execute, right? Kubectl execute is is going to be uh, how we how we execute commands, right? Maybe you need to execute a single command, maybe you need to execute uh, uh, multiple commands, maybe you need to bring up a shell terminal. Right, so that right, this is this is going to bring us very close to what we had with SSH, right? And SSH was I want to get as close to the problem as possible so that I can log in, I can look at stuff, I can I can configure things, and I can try to fix the problem. So I will stop my port forward here, and let's just let's just check this out. Let's uh, let's run some commands. So, okay, get pods, right? Let's try this first one here. So, kubectl, 
exec uh, pod name, and let's pipe in just like an ls, right? Let's run ls on this. Okay, that looks good. Well, it's PWD. Let's see, see what directory we're in. Okay, and let's just let's try to actually like modify this. Let's create a peter.txt file, right? And let's run that ls again, right? And so we can see that we can we can very easily run individual commands uh, on any of these pods, right? This gives us it gives us a, a simple way to to interact with it uh, if we want to test something out. If we think a connection's bad, right? This this is one one way to get get into uh, uh, the pod, right? And then if we want to, if we don't like to do it as a single command, what we could do is bring up our, our SSH uh, style. Bring, we can start a, a, a shell inside of this pod, right? So okay, exec, dash, dash, standard in. Uh, so standard in is going to say it's going to read uh, the input from my terminal, right? And then dash, dash, tty is going to create a new uh, teletype or, or terminal inside of the pod so that you don't uh, interrupt the the terminal running on process one, which would which could uh, disrupt the container. And so, one thing that always got me when I started was I used to always try to to do this with. Oh wait, let me see this. Let's remove, change the pod name. I used to try to always run this with bash, and I used to always hit this problem. And like, one of the things you have to remember is that you're running containers. These containers are normally stripped down, trying to be as lightweight as possible. So bash normally is a little too heavy, and so it gets stripped out. And so there's, but there's always going to be a shell, right? So uh, changing from from the bash shell to just shell uh, will typically get you in. And so now now we have you know what looks like a very normal Linux terminal, what we're all kind of used to. Like traditional Linux troubleshooting, getting into a box and being able to do stuff. <laughs> and so with this, uh, right, like we, we can we can figure out exactly uh, what's going on. Maybe we want to like ping the database, right? Like we want to check out like what our connections are. Like th this is kind of giving us uh, just a very simple way to interact and understand what's happening at a pod level. And so while, while this, is, this is kind of a very traditional way of doing a lot of the Kubernetes troubleshooting stuff, right? Uh, like maybe, maybe there's something better, right? Maybe, maybe now we, have, uh, uh, we are using cloud native application. Maybe there's cloud native tools that do a lot of this stuff, right? And so, right, let's actually go back here for a second, right? Oh, yeah, so this is kind of, kind of a recap. kubectl troubleshooting uh, showing with with the kubectl proxy being able to directly connect to the API, with port forward being able to connect to specific things, and then kubectl exec being able to exec uh, uh, specific commands, right? And then so, as I said, like let's, with cloud native applications, maybe there's cloud native tools to help us do a lot of this stuff, right? So let's try telepresence. Telepresence is a CNCF open source tool. Um, it is currently in the sandbox stage, I believe. And so what it does it is a networking tool that allows you to, to bridge your local laptop's network with the Kubernetes cluster, right? And so, so similar to how uh, uh, kubectl proxy uh, and kubectl, kubectl port forward work, right? Like you're being able to get closer to your, your cluster's network, and you're able, gonna be able to do a lot more things. <laughs> So I'm going to exit this. Uh, I'm going to do a telepresence. Connect. And so it's going to ask me for my password here. Uh, why it needs your password? It's starting up a, a, local, a local daemon on your computer, which creates a networking tunnel to the, uh, to the cluster. Right? So we can see this with telepresence status. Right, and so here we see like this is the, the tunnel that is up. Uh, we see it as running. We see the version. Uh, we can see the the remote the remote cluster's uh, IP address. Uh, uh, we can just see more information about the the daemon running on your laptop and the uh, and what it's up to. So, with that, right, we're going to to check that this is actually working as expected, right? So let's let's actually try to hit the the API and ask for something, right? So uh, cool thing about it, right? You're now connected directly to the cluster's 
network, which means you're able to use things like cluster DNS. Uh, right, so here I have right Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes service in the default namespace, right? And so right, this is something that that. Uh, now you can see that this is working. It's returning a 403 because I don't have any uh, authentication attached to this request. But you can see that the API is responding and letting me know that, yeah, I exist at this address, uh, and here's the information that, that you wanted. Right, and then so, right, like, let's, let's look for some services. Right, like let's, maybe I wanted to check this, right, ping guestbook.default, right? Like so I can see that resolution is working. I'm able to see these things. Uh, most most of these don't respond to ping, but it's an easy way, easiest way that that I know to just check an address real quick. Uh, so, but then that also lets us do things like guestbook.default, knowing that it's running on port 3000, right? So now instead of setting up that, setting up a port forward, or setting up uh, other another way, right? Now this is just working, right? So it's not just not just this one thing either, right? We're connected to all the things. So now, like if we wanted to pull up. Uh, or yeah, so get pods. Like if we want to do connect to one of these pods now, like let's describe this. Okay, try pod. Right, we can also just uh, dive directly into one of these pod IPs. And so pod IPs are, have strange host name rules and don't just don't just exist. You can't use the host name because you have to specifically uh, append a host name in your config file. So the IP address ends up being easier at the pod level. Right, and so right now we can see, oh, much much easier than going back and forth. If you are troubleshooting and you're consistently needing to check a bunch of things, right, being able to not create multiple port forwards and multiple things to hop back and forth, this is kind of just a time saver, right? Being able to just use one tool that bridges the whole network uh, at once. So uh, with that, right, we also right, and we can also pull this up, uh, right? This this DNS works. Anywhere, so it's uh, right the service name, and then the uh, the namespace here, right on port three thousand, uh, gives us the same thing. And right, like maybe maybe we want to do something like 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 oh once again like we want to check check that the database is working, right? So let's see. Uh, so we see that's there. Uh, maybe we want to do Redis CLI, right? Actually, I want to interact with this in some way. Uh, Redis dot. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, I forgot the namespace. Right, so we see that that's operational. Um, maybe we want to actually like get some information back. Right. Oh, there's that. There's the entry. Right. That uh, that I did. Right. Those are the actual information uh, from 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 this database service that shows. Uh, what I had inputted, right? So this is the information on the screen, right? Just interacting directly with the Kubernetes services uh, on my command line. Cool. And and with that, that was that was my demo. Thank you all for listening. Uh, I appreciate it. <laughs>